Good morning, and we're just off to uh, Fetford for one of our weekly trips around Fetford Forest. So let's see what we can find today. We've had lots of rain, so hopefully it will be a good morning. So I'll see you there soon. Well, here we are at uh, Fetford Forest, and straight away all around the car park area, lots of red crackling beliefs. There's another nice one, look. There you go. Red crackling belief. You can tell where they get their name from. There's quite a lot of people about this morning that I've already spotted with bags and buckets and whatever. So uh, they're all out picking today. I'm sure some of them must be commercially picking because they've just got so many huge bagfuls. But there we go. Let's carry on and see what else. Oh, hold on, look. We've got some nice... We've got a lovely pair of blushes. There we go. A lovely pair of blushes free actually there's a little baby one as well so there we go a little family of blushes coming up so let's move on and see uh, what else we got of interest well I think up in front of us we've got a lovely big mature blusher look at the size of that fella Big, big blusher. So those who uh, collect blushes as edibles, it's a nice one there. And there's another. Another two beautiful blushes here, look. And there we go. Aren't they lovely? That shine the morning sun off the top of that cap. There we go. Two lovely mature blushes. Perfect for those who eat them. I leave them, I don't eat them at all. But there you go. So let's uh, go on. I'll take a few pictures and then I'll carry on. Here we've got two young blushes coming through. He's a big fella. And there's another one there, look, just coming through beside him so uh, the wet weather is definitely bringing the blushes up so if anyone collects them they'll be in for a treat this morning so let's carry on here we go yet another beautiful mature blusher they're just everywhere Here we've got a lovely young parasol. There we go. Not very old. Already quite high. That cap will start to open. Someone will be picking him, I guess, when he's a bit bigger. Right beside him, look, crackling beliefs. Right beside him. Living in harmony. So let's uh, carry on and see what else we can find. Right, here we've got uh, a couple of unusual ones. See that red stem? Now this could be the bitter birch belly. It's an old one. Could be the bitter birch belly or it could have been a... It could have been a scarlet belly. It's so old, but it's definitely had a red stem, but we can't see the pores, whether they were red or not. But there's another one here next to it, look. It's exactly the same. There we go. These are probably bitter birch beliefs. I've got a funny feeling that's what they are, but 
we'll take them back with us and we'll have a look and see if we can find out exactly what they are but uh, definitely old this one but I'll have a look see if there's any more here and what are we near we're under an oak tree we're in we're surrounded by three oak trees so we could take that into consideration but we'll put those in the basket not to eat but to take back with us to find out what they are they could be edible they might not be but there we go we're getting uh, lots and lots this morning here we've got a lovely fresh puffball common puffball by the looks of it not very old lovely and white a lot of people do uh, have these as edibles but i don't here's another young one just coming up look beside it there we go so let's move on and see what we can find further up here we can see again more coral coming up again in another place This is the third area we've spotted coral coming up. These are quite fresh. There you go. These are quite fresh, nice colours. So let's carry on and uh, see if there's any more. Well, here's our report on the uh, pair of Earth stars. These are the old ones. See how their stars are now curling under? Do you remember the other two that we come back and they weren't open still? Well, here they are. At last, they're open. So they've opened up nicely. There you go. Two nice, healthy earth stars living in this leaf litter. Here we've found some, what looked like larch beliefs. I'm pretty sure. Soon find out. Yep, they look like large beliefs to me. I will take this one, but now I've picked it. But I will, uh, I will leave the rest. I did get a comment. I noticed. Uh, this morning on one of the uh, videos saying that I should never pick I should always cut the uh, mushrooms well I do usually cut the mushrooms and you'll see when you look in my basket most of them have been cut but when I'm filming and holding the camera in one hand I have to pick and I usually just pick one but yes, you might think it damages the uh, mycelium. I take it that's what you meant when you said the fungus underground. But uh, as you can see, I only do it to show people what I'm picking and what they are, and that's it. So uh, thank you for your comment, but uh, that's what I do, and that's how I do it. The only other way I could do it was to have a tripod, put my camera up on every time I found a, a fungi of interest, which would take me hours and hours. So there you go. That's the reason why I do pick some and not cut everything. So there you go. So let's carry on now. This one we'll keep, but we'll leave the others and we'll see what else we can find. Here we've got some Babel eats. This one's just a tiny young, well, there's two of them, look. Tiny little young Babel eats. So we won't be picking those. There's another one hiding under there, look. He's tiny too. So we'll leave those. Uh, there's a nice one here. That's a nice size. 
So we can have him, we'll break him off. There he is. And there's a bigger one I can see now. Here he is. Hiding under this litter. It's a bit old, he's very old. Very soft and squidgy, look. Very old, so he can stay there. There's another one here. Another old one, very squidgy. There you can see, very old. So we're just looking for those that are that big enough to eat, big enough to pick, but uh, this one's got mold on it. Look, this one's got mold on, see that? So it's not always, they're not always great edibles when you find them. If we'd have come maybe yesterday or the day before, they would have been fine. But uh, at the moment, there's only just this one that I'll be taking. He's the only one that I'll be taking. So let's carry on, see what else we can find. Here we have a lovely group of yellow staghorn. There you go. Really nice, lovely, bright colour. Stands up well in the forest floor. And to the right of us, here to the right of us, we've got a nice babyly. He's had a little nibble. Somebody is slugged probably. Or he might have, where he's come up against that tree trunk. There might have been a uh, twig or something resting against him, which slowed him up. But there you go. A nice edible. A nice baby leet. So let's have another look around this area and see what else we can find. Now we're going to have our usual game of spot the belete. And I'll pan round slowly. And let's see if you can find him. I'll get a bit closer for you. It's a bit hard to see at the moment. Now, I'm sure now you can see him. Just there. Lovely sized baby leet. There he is. Lovely mature baby leet. I've got that smell again, so we'll be moving on because there's a stinkhorn somewhere here. It's quite a strong smell. But there we go, another baby leet, and we'll be taking this one. And I've just spotted another nice baby leet. There we go. Perfect size for an edible. And he'll be coming home with me. There we go. Not too old. Nice example. So let's carry on and see if there's any more. Hold on. I think I've just spotted another one. Yep. Oh, we've spotted another one there. And another one here. This one. That one's got uh, mould on it. So we'll leave him, but we'll definitely be taking these two. Both good size to take. And let's carry on and see what else we can find. I think you can see what's 
peeking out from this moss a fresh stinkhorn let's just move this grass a bit for you there you go a lovely fresh stinkhorn first one today I'm sure there'll be many more now I just wanted to show you I've just cut this babyly and there's two twins together look see how them stems are fused together there you go bit of moss I thought there was two separate so I cut the big one as you can see the caps also joined so Siamese twins I guess but now I've cut them they've got to go into the basket and we will carry on I was just coming along this area and the smell of stinkhorns was quite overwhelming and now I know why we've got two very fresh stinkhorns so they're still coming up in their numbers in this same area the flies are loving it and the stinkhorns are happy because the flies are doing their job they're spreading their spores for them so everybody in the forest is happy here you can see a group of crackling beliefs there's quite a few of them I'm not collecting them today but uh, earlier on I was talking for, to a, a couple from Slovakia they were collecting uh, crackling beliefs and map beliefs so uh, hopefully if they get up to this end they'll be picking these now here I've got some baby leets there's one and I am picking these there's two but it's that one's a bit old that's two I can see another one Oh, I can see. Here we've got some more, look, hiding. What I'll do, I'll cut these and I'll get back to you and we'll see how many we've got. Well, there we go. We've got, what, seven, that large cap, which was growing under a stump, that's eight. There's quite a few little ones about, but we'll leave those for when we come back maybe Monday or Tuesday they might be a bit bigger so there we go eight Babel Eats what a morning for Babel Eats I think I'll be uh, slicing these up and drying quite a lot here we have the yellow field cap in pretty much three of its stages first stage young nice bright and yellow Second stage, opening up, yellow sticking to the centre but the outside getting lighter. And then this is a very mature one. So there we go, you couldn't ask for a better example of seeing how the yellow fill cap develops. There we go. So let's carry on, we we'll start heading towards the car now. I think my basket's uh, half full. Now I'm pretty sure here we've got a blue-green aniseed mushroom. I'm pretty sure it's been nibbled at. It's been broken a bit, so I'll try to uh, show you it if I can reach him. There he is. Let's put the camera back in my hand. There. And we'll have a little smell. We'll have a little smell of him. Yep, that lovely smell of aniseed. So there we go. Blue-green aniseed mushroom. We found one last week, I think, in uh, the Warren. Or two. But there you go. Lovely smell of aniseed. I'm not sure if they're edible or not. I've never tried them. I'll have to have a look. When I get home, I'll have to check up and see if they're edible. 
but they've got that lovely, lovely scent of aniseed. So there you go, we'll pop him back there where he was and let his spores fall off and we'll carry on to the car. Well, it's been a lovely walk this morning. It's certainly uh, that time of year now where um, the Belit family of mushrooms, fungi, are uh, abundant. I've seen several people this morning walking around with bucketfuls. Uh, I've took quite a lot this morning babyly. So I've left. I don't. Uh, I don't dry crackling belites and mat belites, which is what most of those people are after. They, uh, some of them are carrying about carrier bagfuls. Uh, I take it they're going to dry them or freeze them or sell them or give them away I don't know but uh, as you can see my basket this morning has got plenty of babel eats in it probably half full so what I'll do with those I'll scrape the pores off and then I'll slice the flesh up I cut off most of the stem, I'll leave a little bit of stem, and then I will dry them. I might use a few fresh with some normal shop-bought mushrooms uh, for mushrooms on toast in a creamy peppery sauce, which I'll have to show you one day. When I've got time, maybe one day next week, I'll uh, show you how I do my pepper sauce. It's quite simple. But that's what I would be doing with most of them. I'll be drying them. Luckily, because I make glass beads, I've got a kiln running beside me all the time at 500 degrees. So I can lay them in, on baking trays and racks on the top of my kiln. Uh, and then they'll be dry probably in two days, three days. You want them so dry that they snap. If not, if you if they don't snap, if they're not that dry, when you put them in the jars, they'll perhaps go mouldy. They get a bit of mould on them. But uh, that's what I'm going to do with most of these. And probably I'll leave it for the weekend. I won't come here at the weekend because it gets really busy at the weekend. Although I have got these nice, quiet little areas that I come to. But... Um, I'll leave it for the weekend and probably come over on Monday. We'll see what happens. Monday morning maybe, maybe Tuesday morning. It's going to be warm at the weekend, so they're not going to like that, the uh, fungi. So, it just uh, all I've got left to say now is please share, like and subscribe. The channel's really building well now. I'm um, getting some really nice comments from people. Uh, getting some helpful comments from people so uh, it's nice having you along with me seeing what I get up to what I find how I'm learning so hopefully we can all learn together now so like and subscribe folks please have a lovely Thursday I will be happy tonight if West Ham win there you go a West Ham supporter. So have a lovely Thursday, everybody. And don't forget, keep your eyes open.